we I want to make sure this is our our last presenter from the a showcase presenter and uh, actually this is a young man who is um, I have here that he's a mentor and uh, he's going to tell us about his success story mr. Chris Sullivan Good afternoon. My name is Chris Sullivan. I'm from Columbia, South Carolina. And I'm here today, um, mentor, uh, mentors, that's one of the many hats that I wear, but I'm going to wear that hat today. And I, I brought a young man that I took under my wing, um, Raquan. Currently, I'm going to give him a mo couple of um, seconds or minutes, shall I say, to speak later. Um, from gathering t information from today's forum, I think that the young that, that the viewers would see that young children of today have all the potential in the world. It's just about the support system, such as mentorships. But I'm gonna take it a little bit deeper. It's not only about mentorships, it's about having that strong communication between that mentor and that young man or that young woman. Um, and whenever, to get on the education side of it, whenever more money is being sprint, spent in our prisons, Instead of our classrooms, more than $25,000 is spent a year per juvenile to um, incarcerate, but less than 9000 to educate. What message do you think that sends to a child? Or when your state constitution says that you must provide a child with a minimally adequate education? The young men and young women of today take notice of that. Um, I believe that if we want South Carolina to stop being last and everything that is first and first and everything that is last, then we're going to have to stop talking the talk and walk the walk. And that's why I decided to take Laquan and I have about five others. Um, Laquan's my first high school graduate, so I'm pretty excited. But um, not to say that the others didn't graduate, the others are just still in school. Um, but I understand that I used to be Laquan one day. I went through struggles, but I was a piece of coal, which is nothing more than um, a, a diamond, which is nothing more than a piece of coal that never gave up. I understand that everything you do illegal, you can do legal. You want to steal a car, be a repo man. You want to sell drugs, be a pharmaceutical. You want to be a gang member, protect your community and be a law enforcement. You want to be a murderer, protect and serve your country from terrorists. Everything you do illegal, you can do legal. Um, but I went, through, as I stated, I went through some challenging times. Um, I must admit, I did some things I'm not proud of. But I believe that I can return my love. I can return my passion, my knowledge that I have attained by mentoring young men. And that's more of what we need. I'm going to let Laquan tell his story because I believe that it can be very, inspiration, um, very inspirational to others. And Laquan, your show. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. My name, again, is Laquan Kennerly. Um, I'd like to start off by saying that prominent philosopher Aristotle once stated that those who know do, and those that understand teach. I start with that quote because I feel like it is our responsibility as loyal citizens of the United States, educators, politicians, what have you, it is our responsibility to teach the next generation how to elevate and develop our economy and our society as it is today. And uh, a little bit about me, uh, I'm a rap artist. I know some of you are like, oh, that's interesting. Some of you are like, oh, no, another one of those guys. It's fine. I tell you this because we can teach this understanding through expression. How do you express? Through art. What is art? Art is dancing. Art is writing, speaking, rapping, however you want to put it. My art is rapping, however. I found that art and that talent by writing poetry. Sadly enough, I can't recite any of my poems. I can recite every song I've ever written. I can't tell you any poems today, but I can tell you the lesson that I do teach through my songs and through my poetry 
is very vital to the next generation because it teaches them the understanding of that we live in a community today where we represent ourselves now with colors, with numbers, with political parties, yet have we acknowledged and accepted the fact that we all suffer the same problem, the same economical issue. Now me, I was born in Lawrence, South Carolina. My mother passed away when I was six years old. Uh, I lost my father on the same day due to incarceration. He's serving a life sentence because he was faulted for that mishap. My mother didn't die of a natural cause, she was murdered. And that struggle, that situation taught me a lot. It taught me that nothing lasts forever. It taught me that you can be anything you wanna be. Growing up, going through elementary school, middle school, you're gonna be a nobody, you're just another average, typical, everyday black male. You sag your pants, you do this, you do that. Acknowledge everything bad about you, but won't bring out the good that you bring into your community. I love my community. I used to do community service for the YMCA just around the block from my house. I used to go to school faithfully every day after school, and I used to go sit down with elementary school students, and I sit down and I help them with their homework. I made sure of that. They did not get up and play. They did not go do arts and crafts. They did not dance. They did not talk until they finished their homework. Why? Because education is key. Knowledge is power. We need this to elevate and to uplift our society. Once again, like I say, we live in a, a, a society today where we represent ourselves with colors, numbers, and political parties and things of that nature. And yet today we still down talk our gang members, our drug users, but yet we fail to acknowledge the opportunity that we have not given them. Think about your students in school today. They go to school, eight hours, they sit down, they do their school where everything that they're instructed to do, they come home, they have a nice meal, they have a nice, wonderful family who provides for them, who loves for them, as opposed to a student who has to bring their social issues at home and in the community to school. There's a whole nother world outside of those school walls. And I want people to understand that I will teach through my music and through my, through my lessons that there is a better way to go about life. Even if you're the less fortunate, even if you can go home and you don't have food in your refrigerator, if you have a limited amount of clothes or shoes that you have to share, if you have to share a room or if you have to share bathrooms, or if somebody across the street or next door to you doesn't like you because of the color you you are, the clothes that you wear, the things that you do on your leisure time. Think about it like this. We wouldn't have leisure time if our students were spending more time in the community. We talk about high levels of and statistics and rates of students dropping out. Why? Because they have too much leisure time. They're at home playing video games, watching uh, the, the newest cartoon that just came out because they sit on the phone and they talk and they text about things that are relevant to everyday life. But when you have a student who goes to work, who goes to school, who goes to church, who goes out and does things for their community, whether for the young, for the old, for the disabled, what have you, they're still progressing, they're growing, they're developing, they're building character. And that is the type of opportunity that we need to bring to the table and establish in our community if we expect to get something out of it within the next several years. We talk about the political aspect of things, they talk about the president, they talk about Congress. We point fingers and we blame everybody but ourselves. The problem starts at home. They spoke on that earlier, how everything is built and established in your household. My household, eh, not so structured, which was the key word that a gentleman stated earlier. No structure, no mother, no father, nobody has a job, nobody has a college education, nobody has money to provide. When you live in an atmosphere like that, it clutters your mind. And what we want to do as a people is to communicate this issue and help unclutter some of these troubled minds that we have in our community and bring out some of this intellect and some of this, 
this, this, this, this power that we have bestowed inside of us. That's what we need. Not just as young black men, not just as politics, not just as educators, but as citizens of America. That is what we are here for. And I believe that is all of our purposes. Everybody under the sound of my voice, every last single person has to step up, step in and step out and say, hey, this is what needs to be done to handle this situation. Not bicker and batter against each other. Communicate. Young lady, uh, Miss Lady Wright, what's your name now? Marty. Marty, what do you do for a living? She works at the National Dropout Prevention Center. What do you think is the key aspect to preventing a, a student from dropping out? The relationship piece. I've been to school with students who have dropped out their senior year in high school. Six months before you get to walk across that stage and you receive your diploma, you wake up one morning and you say, hey, I'm done. Why? Because they may not have that relationship, that support system with their teachers, with their guidance counselors, with their parents even. And just as she said, it's very important to have a relationship and to communicate the issues that go on in society today. And therefore, we can prevent dropping out. We can prevent troubles and violence and teenage pregnancy and crime in the community. And I hope everybody got the message today and I encourage everybody to practice these things. And maybe, maybe, surely, one day, we will solve this issue and be a greater America. Thank you. In closing, I know that many of you are probably wondering, what can you do? What can you do today? What can you do tomorrow? What can you do so that it won't be, so we won't be dealing with this issue in the future? And the first thing is, that's why I applaud ATV for taking the effort to open up the dialogue. Second step, we have to elect officials who will focus on topics instead of focusing and playing politics for people who pick their names on the tickets and hold them accountable, push for public education, Push for nonprofit organizations that are actually in business to provide a future for children instead of to provide a financial backing for themselves. Um, once again, I want to thank ETV for giving this opportunity for dialogue. And I was taught as a young man, success is when preparation meets opportunity. So now it's our time to prepare the children of tomorrow.